Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Ty Little Gentleman. And for all y'all that want a piece of Lionel Peace, run it back. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Ty Little Gentleman. And for all y'all that want a piece of One Piece, welcome to Wano Peace. Haters get mad when I Luffy, boss up, who's he? Haters get mad when I Sanji, kicking it like Jet Li. Haters get mad when I Nami, that money, come find me. Haters get mad when I Zoro, cut checks like Koro. Before we even start off this video, I want to give a shout out to the Wano Peace Pirate Crew. If you want to be a part of the Wano Peace Pirate Crew, hit that subscribe button below. Do it! Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Wano underscore Peace for Wano Peace memes, Wano Peace channel updates, One Piece cosplay, and One Piece fan art. Uh oh, y'all. This week we are recapping chapters 400 through 410. It's getting intense. You got your boy Luffy. Luffy's headed straight to the. the, the <laughs> boy, have you lost your mind? Because I'll help you find it. Shut it! Shut it! <laughs> I can't get the sense of you keep making noise. Okay, Luffy is headed straight to the gates of justice to try and cut off where they're taking Robin. So he's not following Robin, he's not following Spandam, he's not following Luchi. He's headed to the gates of justice because he knows that's where they're taking Robin. Zoro is facing off against Keiku's two-sword style. He also has the giraffe devil fruit, so he turns into a giraffe. I think it's a pretty whack devil fruit if I had to pick one. He's trying to prove that he really, really likes it. Jayabara is like laughing at him. And actually, the reason that Jayabara even gets a chance to laugh at him is because uh, Zoro and Keiku crash into the battle where Soulja King and Jayabara are battling the wolf devil fruit, which is way cooler than a giraffe. Like, who wants to be a giraffe? Now, Soulja King was trying to throw Karoseki handcuffs onto Jayabara or either Keiku, and he accidentally got him and Zoro connected to each other. So now they're handcuffed in the, the Karoseki handcuffs, and they need a key. They need the number two key. So whoever out of the CP9 that has the number two key is the key that they need. They send Chopper to find this key. Zoro gets tired of running, so does Soulja King, and they decide to use, he picks up Soulja King and uses him as a sword. So he's holding him in his hand along with one of his swords. It's pretty funny. Uh, obviously Soulja King is scared. He has a lot of the same traits as Usopp, if you ask me. Nami is facing off against Kumadori, that's the guy with the long hair, and Frankie is facing Fukuro, that's the guy with the big mouth, the big mouth guy, that uh, if you hit him, he can tell you how much your power level is. Sanji, when we find Sanji, he's having tea with Khalifa because he keeps falling for her. You know how Sanji is with the ladies. He can't hit a lady because that's how he was trained to never kick a lady. And Khalifa, of course, she's playing off of this, and she's like, oh, I hid the key somewhere on my body. And of course, you know, Sanji's like, I'll look for it, and then she kicks him in his face again. They kind of have a little battle where Sanji's just kind of proving he could hit her at certain moments, but doesn't in hopes that this would just make her not want to fight. But this doesn't scare her at all. She's like, if you're not going to hit me, I'm just going to put the whoop in my face. How about this? You want a little fun? Get oh, get wet, baby! Chopper ends up breaking in and saving Nami from Kumadori just in time before she gets strangled by him. Um, because his hair gets real long, he can control every part of his body through intense training. He can control every part of his body. So he can even control the strands of hair on his head to like form hands, punch, you know what I mean, grab people, wrap around, choke them. So it's a pretty cool technique. Now she swiped the number three key from Kumadori, but just couldn't get away from him in time. Now, when they get away from Kumadori for a second, Sanji is found, and he's all, like, real, real smooth and has been defeated by Khalifa at this point. So Nami realizes that Sanji couldn't hit her because of, you know, his code, and she goes to fight her instead. And now we switch back to my boy Luffy. Luffy uses Gear 3 to break down one of the gates leading to the Gates of Justice. And now he's hot on the trail of Luchi, Robin, and Spandy. The only issue is, after he used this Gear 3 technique, he turned little for a second. 
But it was like little Luffy for a second, and then eventually he just got back to normal size. So I'm assuming after he uses such an intense attack, it takes a toll on his body, and until his body recharges, he's just like a small person. Frankie and Fukuro are like going back and forth, fighting each other, but it's kind of clear that Frankie's way better than him. And the issue is, Fukuro's having problems. He's like, yo, why can you hit me so easy? And he's like, it doesn't matter. Frankie says, it doesn't matter how hard steel you get. I'm made from like the finest steel. So I'm definitely going to be able to hit you because I'm made from steel. So he just kind of put the whooping on Fukuro. It was pretty, pretty easy. And it was fun to watch, but he needed to recharge. So he heads over to where Chopper is, and Chopper actually gets him cola from the fridge, but that's where he had locked. Chop Chopper had locked Fumadori in the freezer for a second. So now he has to go back in the freezer to get the cola for um, Frankie. He actually gives him vegetable juice at one point, and um, Frankie was doing all these vegetable attacks, and it was funny, just like the little humor in there. But then he actually gives him the cola that he needs so char so uh, Frankie can charge back up. Now the move we were talking about earlier with Kumadori is actually um, it's like a it's called biofeedback, and that's when you can control your whole body. When Chopper has to go back into the freezer, Kumadori is actually freed, and he has to use a rumble ball. But it's his second dose, so he can hardly control his transformation. So that proves, you know, kind of an issue. And then Kumadori kind of grabs him. He's about to kill him. And he's like, yo, instead of dying, I'm going to go ahead and go unconscious and pop this third rumble ball. So he takes another rumble ball. He goes unconscious, becomes this giant monster. He whoops Kumadori easily. But then he also smashes Frankie. And then he starts climbing to the top of the tower. Zoro and Soge King said that Chopper was their only hope of finding that key. So Chopper took this really into heart. Like, he took that to heart. Like, I'm the hope. I'm the hope. He kept saying that. And then at that point, it was kind of like, since he was the hope, I think even though he's unconsciously this monster right now because of the third Rumble Ball, he actually is... Uh, I think subconsciously he still remembers that he's the hope and he kind of knows his mission in the back of his head. He, um, okay, so Chopper, the last time he took three rumble balls, he almost destroyed a whole village. And that's where he actually, actually becomes a monster. He looks crazy. He's taller than a building and he really just, any attack he uses is going to finish anybody that gets hit by it. Now, Nami's fighting Khalifa. What we find is Khalifa is a soap woman. So, she used the soap devil fruit, and basically she can absorb anything, right? Even people's power, people's energy, and she can also make you very, very smooth, very, very clean, right? So that's what she did to Sanji. And then now she's fighting Nami. Nami's laying on the floor, um, kind of beat up, and Khalifa is taking a bubble bath, just kind of chilling like, yep, you can't even move right now. I'm going to go get other things done. I'm going to go do laundry. I mean, she didn't do laundry, but you know, that's kind of how it feels. Just very, very rude to do in a fight. You beating somebody up and you just take a bubble bath. Like, you got that much time? That's rude. Just finish him off at that point. Nami, while she was waiting for Khalifa to come fight her again, she charged her Thunderbolt tempo. Charged it, used it, but Khalifa blocked it by turning it into a bar of soap. I think being a bar of soap is another whack devil fruit power I think it has its benefits but I'd be mad like imagine like you bite into a devil fruit and this is the one you get or that giraffe one is the one you get nah I'd rather be rubber I'd rather be thunder sand anything other than some of these corny ones okay so even though she made Nami's legs all wobbly and slippery like Sanji and she could barely use them Nami used her mirage technique to have Khalifa just swinging all over the place. And it looked like Nami was about to get the upper hand and then Chopper smashed him. That scene ended right there and they switched back to Luffy. Luffy had caught up to Robin and them and now he's facing off against Rob Lucci. They're kind of evenly matched, but you know, Rob Lucci is kind of a little bit better than Luffy at this moment. And then when Spandam realizes that Luffy broke through to fight him, he's trying to call people and get a check in 
like he tries to check in with the CP9, like, yo, CP9, what's good? What's good? What's going on? And he's actually using the gold Din Din Lushi. This means he triggered the Buster Call. So now you have five Vice Admirals, ten warships headed to drop a Buster Call on Emmy's lobby. This is not good at all. Spandam was like, he's still on the loudspeaker, like, oh, it doesn't matter. These these soldiers don't matter. All that matters is my promotion. Who cares who dies just to get you where, into custody? This is all that matters. It's worth it. It's worth it. So now all of the soldiers that were guarding the Frankie family, that were guarding the mechanics, they they just leave. They run away. They can't believe what they heard, that their commander doesn't care about them, and they just flee the island. Now, where these chapters leave off, Luffy and Rob Lucci are having an intense battle, but Luffy has to beat him in order to get to Nico Robin in time. Because getting her back from Emmy's lobby is one thing, but getting her back after she crosses the gates of justice is a whole nother thing, man. So he has to get through it. He has to figure it out. We'll find out next time. But let me catch you up on the short comments. Okay, so Miss Golden Week is trying to break everybody out of the prison. There's an explosion in one part of the top corner, right of the corner of the prison. And Crocodile was kind of like, yo, I don't really feel like escaping. And I guess that makes sense because think about it, like, they're going to come for him. They're going to try and come for him. Uh, he's not a Shichi Bukai anymore. His plan failed. It's kind of like, it might almost be better to just be in jail at this point. But they end up breaking him out, and everybody has different disguises. Think you can trick me into letting you out again? Well, you can't, because this is my choice. Get the heck out of all here. All right, all right. Reverse psychology. So, the ladies transformed into the princess painter, chocolate lady, and Paula of the bar. The others became a tank fireman, a pizza delivery man, and then Crocodile and Mr. One were the Pirate King and a hero, whatever that means. They're just staying in an abandoned, uh, abandoned building or abandoned house they found in the wilderness. So hopefully that works out for them. Hopefully they turn over a new leaf. And I wonder if that's the last time we'll hear from the Borough Works organization or if the Marines are gonna have to go after them. But if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what was your favorite part of these 10 chapters. The Grand Line is a rough place. You're going to need a tough pirate crew. So why not hit that subscribe button below? Thanks for watching this one. Peace.